from child prodigy to second command of the entire Fire Nation. Let's deep dive into Princess Azula's journey and explore how her unique style evolved to make her one of the most dangerous firebenders of all time. We should start at the beginning. Azula's parents, Ozai and Ursa, named her after Fire Lord Azulon, who, like his father Sozin, practiced firebending as a weapon fueled by hate, anger, and a desire for power. And just like her grandfather, Azula was a naturally gifted firebender, able to pull off advanced techniques at an early age. She's a true prodigy, just like her grandfather for whom she's named. Quickly becoming her father's favorite, Azula outshined her brother Zuko in every way, including her relentless study of military strategy. Great-grandfather won because... Because even though his army was outnumbered, he cleverly calculated his advantages. The enemy was downwind and there was a drought. Their defenses burned to a crisp in minutes. Correct, my dear. Azula's skill as a tactician and a manipulator developed soon thereafter, as she coolly played into her father's favoritism, even suggesting to her mother that her grandfather wasn't fit to rule the Fire Nation. He's not exactly the powerful Fire Lord he used to be. Someone will probably end up taking his place soon. This morbid suggestion would eventually tear her family apart, leading to the poisoning of Fire Lord Azula, her mother Ursa's banishment, and ultimately, Ozai's ascension to Fire Lord. And later, during Zuko's Agni Kai against Ozai, Azula watched with glee as her brother was permanently scarred and stripped of his birthright. With Zuko now banished on a wild goose chase to find the long-lost Avatar, Azula had become the crown princess and the direct heir to the Fire Lord. She would spend the next three years training with her mentors Lo and Lee to become one of the Fire Nation's most powerful warriors with the development of her blue firebending. Scientifically, blue flames burn around twice the temperature of orange or yellow, and based on her sheer destructive force, we can only assume that Azula's flames are at least twice as strong as a typical firebender's. Also, rather than needing a closed fist or an open hand, Azula could create fire with only two fingers, as well as wield it in new inventive ways, like fire blades that could cut a building in half, giant spinning discs of flames, or even shields for defense. By age 14, Azula was not only one of the Fire Nation's most powerful benders, she was also extremely skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat. When she tried to capture Zuko, Azula was able to hold him off without any bending at all, dodging every single attack by evasive maneuvers or throwing off his bending form. With her combined physical strength, agility, and bending, Azula was able to overtake multiple opponents in any given fight. Along with Azula's incredible combat abilities, she's also a master of deception. Dad's going to kill you. From playing mind games with her brother Zuko. Azula always lies. Azula always lies. To even when her bending was taken away by the Day of Black Sun, Azula was still able to successfully stall Team Avatar by masking her heart rate against Toph's lie detection. And stick to the truth. I'll be able to tell if you're lying. Are you sure? I'm a pretty good liar. I am a 400-foot-tall purple platypus bear with pink horns and silver wings. Okay, you're good, I admit it. With a few clever disguises, Azula eventually overthrew the Earth Kingdom without a single fight when she, Tai Li, and Mei dressed themselves as Kyoshi warriors and enacted the coup of Ba Sing Se. We are the Earth King's humble servants. Azula was even able to convince a reformed Zuko that he could restore his honor to the Fire Nation by teaming up with her to capture Aang. I need you, Zuko. I've plotted every move of this day, this glorious day in Fire Nation history. And the only way we win is together. At the end of this day, you will have your honor back. You will have Father's love. You will have everything you want. And of course, as she predicted, Azula's plan worked flawlessly. Whenever facing a threat like Aang about to enter the Avatar state, Azula could always turn to one of the rarest and deadliest subskills in the art of firebending. Lightning. Azula learned to master this advanced technique during her rigorous training in childhood. And while we never saw her redirect lightning like Iroh, Azula could still create electrical blasts capable of blowing holes in the solid rock. In fact, the bolt of lightning Azula shot at Aang was so powerful, it almost killed him. 
and would have broken the Avatar cycle right then and there if not for Katara healing him with her spirit water. That said, Lightning wasn't the last trick of Azula's sleeve, as she had discovered Jet Propulsion, a technique so difficult we wouldn't see it from another firebender until Sozin's Comet. Azula could use intense blasts of fire from each of her limbs to literally rocket herself across great distances, or sometimes right into her enemies, and even facing certain death. She's not gonna make it. Azula was still strong enough to save herself from a total freefall with her bending and a hair comb. Of course she did. For short bursts of time, Azula could also use her jet propulsion to take flight. She was truly poised to be the strongest firebender of all time, if not for allowing her rage and desire for power to get the better of her. Come on, Slowpoke, faster! Before Ozai named Azula his successor as Fire Lord, he revealed to her that she would be staying home while he would lead his invasion of the Earth Kingdom alone. But I thought we were going to do this together. My decision is final. You... you can't treat me like this. You can't treat me like Zuko! Azula, silence yourself. But it was my idea to burn everything to the ground! I deserve to be by your side! Azula! Ozai was willing to let his daughter take over his second-hand kingdom but she couldn't reconcile that they wouldn't rule side by side as equals, and that he, in fact, would be the supreme leader of the entire Earth. From this moment on, I will be known as the Phoenix King. Unable to deal with the reality of her father's decision, however, Azula began to succumb to a full-on mental break, just hours before her coronation as the new Fire Lord. You're all banished! But she became suspicious of everyone and even ordered her closest advisors to fight an Agni Kai. But we're, we're not, not firebenders. firebenders. All right, fine. Lo, you're banished. Lee, you can stay. But I'm Lee, so who's banished? And while committing the worst mistakes she might have ever made, trimming her own bangs, Azula began to hallucinate visions of her mother. What a shame. You always had such beautiful hair. Azula was incapable of accepting her mother's love and allowed her anger, rage, and obsession to completely overtake her sanity. And sadly, there was no coming back for her after this point. When Katara and Zuko arrived to face Azula at her coronation, it was a flip of all their previous fights. Azula was wild and careless, while Zuko was calm, centered, and finally prepared to face her. So for the title of Fire Lord, he agreed to a one-on-one -on -one Agni Kai. There's something off about her. I can't explain it, but she's slipping. The Agni Kai for the fate of the Fire Nation occurred on the day of Sozin's Comet, which returned to the Earth every hundred years and greatly enhanced the power of every firebender. Azula was able to launch a wall of blue fire towards her brother, but because Zuko had restored his bending with the help of the Sun Warriors, his red and orange flames were enough to match Azula's for the first time. No lighting today? What's the matter? Afraid I'll redirect it? Oh, I'll show you lightning! With Zuko prepared to redirect her strongest weapon and no options left, Azula resorted to deception once again, firing her charged up lightning bolt towards a defenseless Katara. No! Zuko took the full bolt of lightning, sacrificing himself, but saving Katara's life. But Katara was now alone against a crazed and comet-enhanced Azula, who immediately attacked her as soon as she tried to help Zuko. With nowhere to hide and only a small amount of water to bend for protection, Azula had Katara on the run for her life. That is until Katara found a sewer drain and decided to play Azula's own game of deception against her. Azula never learned the breath of fire technique that Iroh taught Zuko to keep him warm in extreme weather. 
And when Katara froze Azula in ice, she was easily able to waterbend herself free from the trap, keeping the Fire Princess from attacking so she could chain up her arms and legs and put an end to her terror for good. If Azula had spent any time with her uncle, she would have learned fire was born from energy and life. Power in firebending comes from the breath, not the muscles. In spite of being one of the most powerful and unique firebenders of her time, Katara bested Azula with a simple trick and was able to heal Zuko just in time. With the end of the war, he went on to lead a brand new age in the Fire Nation, while Azula was still haunted by her own demons. Feeling pity on Azula, Zuko placed her into a mental health facility where her mind continued to wither away. That is until she was asked by Zuko to help in the search for their mother. And while Azula agreed secretly, she planned to confront her mother with catastrophic intent. Her emotions burned as hot as her blue fire, and Azula ended up escaping into the night. She was finally free to lick her mental wounds, and of course, prepare for her next devious scheme. Tell us which you think is the strongest of all of Azula's many skill evolutions. Comment below and keep watching for more of your favorite Avatar moments.